Hi guys, it's Michael from Music for Income. Today I wanted to give you a little tour of my mobile studio setup that I use to write music for TV shows when I'm away from home or on the road, such like. I also, on top of that, want to give you a version of it that doesn't need to have anything plugged into mains power. So that's really useful if you want to do some work on an airplane or somewhere where you can't plug stuff in. And lastly, I want to give you some options now in 2021 for how to do this mobile setup super cheap. If you're interested in making an income from your music by writing for TV, film or games, subscribe to the Music for Income channel. You'll find a load of goodies here and also you'll be able to keep updated of new videos we post if you click that notification bell as well. So I'm a professional TV composer and I split my time between New York and London. And that means that when I'm writing, I'll often have to either start a project or finish off a project in a different country. And so I'll take a mobile setup and do it uh, that way. The setup I'm gonna show you is the exact same setup I've used to work on a whole load of uh, documentaries. I mainly do TV documentaries. So it's a really good setup, very robust. And I wanna just take you through exactly what I use and why I think this stuff's quite good. Okay, so here it is, uh, my little traveling setup that I can throw into a suitcase or into a bag. Um, this is the main brains behind it, MacBook Pro. Um, I'll put the specs, by the way, of everything and links to um, where you can check out uh, more of this equipment if you're inspired to do so. Uh, I'll put that all in the description below. Um, but yep, MacBook Pro, uh, as I'm running Logic, um, you might be using a uh, um, Windows laptop, of course, if you're running Cubase or whatever your preference is. But this is what I'm on. Um, then in no particular order, so a hard drive here. Now for a mobile setup, this is a, a bit of a clunky, heavy uh, unit, but I've had it for years and it's solid as a rock, this lacy hard drive. Um, I use this to store my samples on because I am a big believer in keeping uh, your samples off of your main hard drive just because there's so many of them. Um, so I want to give them their own little dedicated hard drive. So that's the Lacey that I use for that. The Lacey D2 hard drive currently retails for $185 for a four terabyte capacity. It's got a 7200 RPM speed. Now the higher the RPM, the faster the hard drive. And I personally wouldn't go lower than that for a hard drive that you're streaming samples from. The other option is to go for a solid state drive. You'll get better speeds with this, but your cost now goes up considerably. Then working our way around here, the audio interface I use is the Duet by Apogee. This is a really cool little thing. I like the fact that it's like a, a low profile, and this like slightly dramatic uh, launch the nuclear warheads button here. So this uh, is great. Again, slides into a bag really, really easily, so easy to take around. Uh, you've got a USB in to the computer. And this other cable leads to these breakout cables. Now these are very cool. So basically you'll have two of them where you can run a cable straight to your uh, monitor speakers. And the other two are ins and they've got these very nice little uh, combination um, inputs here where you can put an XLR, you can put a jack. So you could get an electroacoustic a guitar in there, you could get a microphone for vocals, um, and obviously you can get uh, both of these at the same time recording, uh, so you could have a room mic and uh, uh, something up close. Apogee have updated the Duet model as of July 2021. So mine is the Duet 2, and they now have this, the Duet 3. The new model still has great preamps and converters for good recording quality and is compatible with Mac OS 10.15 and Windows 10 if you're on a PC. It retails at $599. Now for a more budget friendly option still with great quality, have a look at the Apogee One. Now it only gives you one XLR plus one jack input as opposed to those multi inputs I showed you. But this is still brilliant. It's tiny, so it's great for travel, and it retails at $284. So that's the Apogee Duet. Now, this absolutely tiny keyboard, um, pros and cons of these tiny keyboards. So the pros, 
it's tiny. Um, it's an Akai LPK25, really small guy. Um, and again, will uh, go into a bag really, really, really easily. It's USB powered, so um, you can go straight into the computer. Downside with this little guy is um, there's no sustain pedal. It's actually a button. I don't know if you could hear it, see it rather. You can't hear it. That would be weird to hear something that's a button. Um, there's a sustain button. So, I mean, this really is a project keyboard. You wouldn't want it as a main studio setup. Just as a little side note, um, I actually uh, based in the in I'm based in New York at the moment. So in the UK, I actually have two things stored there for when I travel that I add um, to this setup. I have a proper um, uh, I think it's a 49 note or 62 or 61, however many notes there are. A, a bigger size USB music keyboard. Um, if I'm going to be spending a few weeks on a project, because to be honest, I don't want to be on this little thing for any more than I have to, useful as it is. Um, so I have that and I also have a monitor screen, a second monitor that I will use with this setup so that that's really useful to me in terms of uh, if I'm scoring a picture obviously then I'm going to uh, want to have two screens. It's usually a lot of help to, to have two screens in those situations. Now that leads me quite nicely onto my next point, which is um, I'm a massive fan of this guy. Um, it's, let's just unplug this for a second. So this is a uh, little USB extension, except it's so much more than just that. So this is USB-C because the uh, uh, MacBooks are USB-C now. And then we've got two USB 3s here, two USB 2s, um, we got a whole bunch of other stuff, memory card, um, and this importantly for the second screen, so this HDMI out. So this is a lifesaver, I have a couple of these lying around, they're great. Um, so, and they, they uh, power through as well I think, so you can, um, you can, you know, they will power stuff that um, is plugged into them. While we're talking about cool little gizmos as well, there's something else that I'm a big fan of, um, which is this guy. Now, let's go up here. It's a little extension chap that's USB-C on the end and regular USB there. So again, I have a load of these guys. Um, knocking around the place, just because Apple changed to USB-C, which actually is really annoying. I found as everything I've got is USB 3. So I use that, for example, for the audio interface, because you kind of want to have that running directly into your computer, um, whereas uh, other things, and same with the samples, actually, that the um, sample drive I like to have running absolutely into the computer. Um, here, whereas if you've got some other peripherals, the breakout box, this one um, is probably fine. So last but not least, monitors. Now this is such a difficult thing to try and get right. You want the best sound you possibly can get, but with a monitor with a small footprint. So I tested quite a few, um, I've had this set up for a couple of years, um, and we'll go into some newer options in a minute, but uh, Genelec, um, which is a lovely brand of monitor speaker, which you'll probably have found in um, studios or you might have a pair yourselves. They do um, a model called the 8010A, and these guys are very, very cool, really, really good sound to them, um, and a very small footprint. And if you can see them here, um, and I'll give you a little measure of them in a second, but You've got power comes into the base of it just up here and as well, slightly difficult to access, but if you can see in there, there's actually, that red bit is actually a bunch of little faders that you can adjust the, the lows, which is really useful um, on a speaker of this size, should you need to. Just absolute bugger to get in there to try and do it, but you can. Um, power on off button as well. And they come with this cool little thing um, where you can actually move the feet to 
to, if you just move them on the feet rather, you can angle it up so you can see that these slightly raised up towards me as opposed to, if I did this, then they're raised down. That's no use to anyone, unless I guess you've got them positioned high up. So that's what we want. There you go. Um, now, one of the things I would say about getting a second pair of monitors, because you'll probably already have some for your home studio, um, is that you can actually, when you're at home in your regular studio, use them as a secondary set of monitors to reference your mix. Now, if you're gonna do that, I found this um, cool box. This guy here, a um, company called SM Pro. This is the M Patch 2. And uh, you've got a little output selection button. You can see here, output one, output two. So you can actually um, put two sets of speakers coming out of the back here. Um, so you've got left and right for output speakers two and output speakers one. So if you're gonna invest in a second set of speakers, um, it's nice to be able to use them on a more permanent basis than just when you travel. Now, whilst this model has been discontinued, you can find loads of alternative monitor switching boxes. The Mackie Big Knob Passive Monitor Controller, for example, does exactly the same thing and will set you back 70 bucks. So let's go over this setup one more time. We've got the MacBook Pro, we've got the teeny weeny little Akai LPK25 keyboard, the Genelec 8010A uh, monitor speakers, I've got a lacy hard drive here, I've got this Orky, very useful uh, USBs, ins, outs, HDMIs, all that stuff to USB-C, and we've got the Duet by Apogee interface here. So that's the setup I use. Now, as mentioned, if you want an even more streamlined setup, where you don't actually have to plug anything in because Genelex need power and the hard drive, the lacy hard drive will need power. So let's have a look at what you could substitute out if you wanted to get this set up and make it one where you wouldn't have to plug anything in so you could work on an airplane or wherever the hell you want to, on a beach, who knows? So in that situation, I'd take out the monitor speakers entirely and use a good set of headphones. You could, in that sense, even if you wanted to, if you're on a headphone setup, get rid of the uh, audio interface completely and then switch out the hard drive. You can get these really cool, I love them, these Samsung solid state drives. They're absolutely tiny um, and they got good enough speeds to run samples from. So that would be an awesome option. So you're going to make your setup even smaller, absolutely could fit it into a small bag at that point in time and have a completely non have to plug it in a bull setup. If that's a thing, it probably isn't a way of describing it. No mains power required until of course your laptop dies, which at some point it will, but it should keep you going if your laptop battery is pretty good. If you have a mobile studio setup that you use, drop us the specs in the comments below and what piece of gear you have that you're particularly impressed with. And now as promised, here's a couple of recommendations for getting a mobile setup as a cheaper price as you possibly can. Now, to save money on a mobile setup, the other option is to check out the used market. You probably already have a laptop that you may be able to use, but if not, and you're on a Mac, check out backmarket.com for a refurbished MacBook Pro. This 2017 model, for example, has the fast i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD drive, and a 12 month warranty, all for under $800. For those on a PC, Amazon has a selection of refurbished machines, such as this Lenovo ThinkPad. An alternative set of small and hugely impressive monitor speakers are the IK Multimedia iLoud micro monitors. They give a solid sound and are priced lower than the Genelex, so definitely worth checking out if the Genelex come in a bit pricey for you. The Apogee Duet 2 is on eBay. And the Akai LPK25. 
Now, I personally wouldn't buy secondhand external hard drives, so I've not included those under the used options here. That gives you some great monitor speakers and an awesome audio interface, a brand new hard drive, and that mini keyboard. Now, of course, you may already have some of these components, so wouldn't need to buy them. Plus, there are, of course, other alternatives to these. I'm only showing you what I've used as it's been such a rock solid setup for me over the last few years. So I hope you found this video useful. Remember to subscribe to the Music for Income channel and also check out these videos and playlists for how to get your music onto films and TV shows, which you can now do from anywhere in the world on your new mobile studio. Catch you guys next time.